Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. If you're returning, thank you so much for being here. You know how much I appreciate every single one of you. Today's video is a collaboration with Antoinette from Simple Yet Chic. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but for right now, let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. So this is my inspiration. I love this little lighthouse. I was so excited to make this. I've got a Dollar Tree foam tree thing. I don't know. Um, wood pile pieces from the Hobby Lobby, one larger one and one smaller one. The larger one came in a pack of two. And then I'm gonna be using one of those foam balls also from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna need one of those round ones. And the smaller wood rounds, I believe was a pack of four. And I think both packs were $2.99. The four pack might've been $3.99, but I thought that was a good deal. So I am just taking a kitchen knife that I have now um, added to my crafting arsenal. <laughs> And I cut the foam piece in, I guess I cut the top third off and I'm just using my sanding block to make sure that it's nice and even and level. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the smaller piece. And you can see how I'm just planning on stacking it. So I'm, I'm kind of building my little lighthouse structure here and figuring out how it will go. So I cut my sphere in half and I sanded that off as well. And that's gonna serve as the top part of my lighthouse. So checking my phone to make sure that I'm keeping my uh, inspiration picture in mind. I've got a little wood bead that I'm gonna use on the top. I just added some hot glue and I'm tucking that on there. And then I'm going to try and fill in the hole with some more hot glue, just so that it's filled in. I was just showing you my Ocean Chalk Paint by Waverly, and I'm gonna give my base a good coat of the chalk paint, the Ocean Blue Chalk Paint, and I'm also gonna be painting that little top dome piece as well with the same color. So now I'm gonna be coming in with my Adirondack white chalk paint and I am going to coat the two pieces that I had cut apart that are going to be the body of the lighthouse, if you will. And gonna just make sure that those are nice and covered. Obviously this is already white, but I just wanted it all to be painted. And I'm showing you my little chippy brush that I'm going to use also with the Adirondack white. I'm gonna do a dry brushing method on the base and also on the top. The top was still a little bit damp, so I did my best with that. I probably should have gone back in after it was dry and added some more white paint, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so, and now I'm also, sorry, I'm kind of out of frame there, but um, I'm drawing a stripe around my larger base for my water tower showing me you know, my silver lining chalk paint and i'm going to do a stripe around the upper part of the water tower and also obviously i'm giving this other piece um with this other wood round a coat as well so kind of told you about that out of order here but so here i am doing the stripe and continuing to get everything painted um, based on the inspiration picture. Now I'm going to just use a generous amount of hot glue and glue the foam down to the wood round. And it's actually held really well. So I know sometimes hot glue doesn't work real well with wood, but I guess because it was the foam, I don't know, it, it, was, it was working quite well. So I'm just making sure I'm getting this as centered as possible and just building up my little lighthouse here and if you are returning thank you so much for being here you all know how much i appreciate you if you are new welcome to my channel i hope that you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already and i am now grabbing a bunch of little beads these are wooden beads at first i was going to try and use the tumbling tower blocks but they were a little bit too big for what i was looking to do and so I opted to use these beads instead. The other thing I was thinking I probably could have used um, was dowels. I probably could have cut those down and used those, but I kind of liked the interest that this gave it. 
And of course there I realized that I'd missed <laughs> painting one of the little wood beads because it was out of my line of sight. It was hiding behind the, the little um, lighthouse structure at the top there. So I made do with the ones that I had painted and it was all fine. So now I'm coming in with some white twine and I am just going to string all of these on here. This is going to be like my little rope barrier or rope railing, if you will. So I'm using just hot glue again, and I am adhering all of these to the little deck. Is that what you would call this on a lighthouse? I'm not sure, but just getting those all situated. And then I'm coming in and I'm tying off the little twine cord, and then I'll trim that down. So now it's time to add on the little dome to the lighthouse. So adding that in. And I just think this is so super sweet, you guys. What do you think so far? I am loving this. It makes my heart happy. So I'm taking some elephant chalk paint. You certainly could use black, but I decided elephant was going to be dark enough for what I was looking to achieve. And I'm just drawing a little doorway, just a little arched door. And obviously I've been doing all of this just by hand, but you can certainly tape things off if you feel the need to do that. But let me know what you think. I love this piece. So as I said before, I appreciate all of my sweet subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, my name is Corey and this is Crafted by Corey. I love doing all different kinds of DIYs, always on a budget. I try to have a lot of fun and I usually try to try new things. I also let you know when I mess up because I definitely am not perfect. <laughs> so thank you for being here. I'm super excited about today's video. <clears throat> excuse me, because it is a collaboration with my friend Antoinette from Simple Yet Chic. She is such a sweetheart. And when you're done watching my video, I hope that you'll go over and watch hers as well. There is going to be a link in my description box for Antoinette's channel and video. She has such wonderful projects, lots of farmhouse, and I am sure that you are going to love her just as much as I do. So when you hop on over there to watch her video, please let her know that I sent you. DIY number two. This is my inspiration. The anchor on the left is what I'm going to be aiming for. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It was like $149 to $249. Say what? <laughs> so I've got a Dollar Tree picture that I am going to take apart here. And um, this is probably smaller than, than what those prints were. I imagine those prints were um, much larger. But... We're going to do a smaller version and it's only going to cost us a couple of dollars. So I am prepping my frame. I'm just sliding some paper in between the glass and the frame so that I can go ahead and paint this. This particular frame, and I'm using my Adirondack white chalk paint. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm using my silver lining chalk paint for this. Um, these frames, the one that I'm using, now I'm using my uh, Adirondack white and I'm just going to paint the back side of the insert that was in here. So sorry, what I was going to say was that a lot of times the glass will come out of the frames from Dollar Tree, but this particular one had some foam around the side because it had a little bit of a, a gap to allow for like a bump up, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I'm not sure, but it was easier to leave the glass in, which is why I did it the way that I did. So I was showing you before my little joy that I love cutting out this image that I had found just on the Cricut design space. It was already designed. All I had to do was select it, add it, and tell it to cut it. It was so simple. And I am just going to apply this to my white backing that I'd painted with the Adirondack white. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish it, make sure everything is nice and adhered. You see my daughter Elena just dropped off some dinner for me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, multitasking is a way of life for me. But I'm going ahead and popping this back into the frame and I am going to be covering the back of it, you guys. So I just wanted to make sure I did clean this before and I'm just identifying some other places that 
needed some cleaning but um, if you are going to seal it like this you do want to just make sure you clean the inside of your glass before you do this because then it just becomes that much more difficult to take care of it later but this is just regular craft paper I am cutting out a square and I am going to glue it to the back just to make things nice and clean. Um, you probably noticed earlier that I had taken out the little claw tooth hanger and I'm going to just pop that right back in again. Those um, pop in and out really pretty easily on the Dollar Tree frames. I kind of bent it a little bit so I'm just fixing it there and I'm just going to press it right back in. I think because these frames they might actually just be a really dense foam. I do not think they're wood which is probably why they are so inexpensive but using my hot glue making sure that is all nice and sealed down and then we are all done i love this piece love it i hope you love it too diy number three so $2.99 for this ombre wrapped canvas painting. We're gonna try it with a Dollar Tree picture frame, or excuse me, wrapped canvas. I've got my white apple barrel and my bright blue apple barrel paints. And I am going to start by just squeezing a whole bunch of paint out onto the canvas. Um, so this is something I have not tried before and I was kind of working through in my head how best to do this. Um, so you can see me kind of thinking as I go here, but I'm starting out with this flat brush and I'm just going to draw down on the blue. Now, when I started working in the white, um, it quickly started blending the colors and I know that that's expected to some point, but I'm trying to figure out how to get that ombre effect right and so i'm trying a couple of different things i'm like okay well maybe i'll draw it all the way down and so i've got my plate there and i'm taking off the paint and i'm just blending and blending and blending and uh, yeah it just took some time to work with it so again i i think i actually did do an ombre once like a year ago and i honestly don't even remember how i had done it that time but um this was definitely interesting. I, I, I enjoyed the process of this. I enjoyed figuring out what I needed to do to get the effect that I was looking for. And so I had, as you saw, just continued to add some more of the darker blue at the top and I'm just working my way down. And eventually you're gonna see me in a second, I'm gonna grab a baby wipe and I'm going to start cleaning my brush after every swipe. I don't know if that's the right technique. Like I've said in the past, if you've watched my videos, I am not a trained artist. I have never taken a painting class. I am, <laughs> I am not a painter by you know any stretch of the imagination as far as um, being like taught or skilled. Um, I, I enjoy it though. I'm having so much fun figuring out paint <laughs> and so it's been really fun for me here i'm getting my baby wipe so i because you know what i am determined if nothing else to get things to work out so this is a good example of when to just be patient with yourself give yourself a chance and if it's not looking like what you hope right in the beginning keep working on it and you can get it there or sometimes it might even end up being better than what you had expected and hoped so you can see me going back to my plate every once in a while i had taken quite a bit of paint off of the canvas when i was doing this because you know just with the fact of trying to not drag the deep blue too far down the canvas i was unloading a lot of paint onto the plate but that gave me the opportunity to just go back and pick up more when i needed it so now if you had noticed on the inspiration picture it had it was, the image was kind of dragged out to around all four sides so that's what i'm doing now and just giving you that kind of wispy um sense around all of the sides and you should see me right now because i'm like trying to talk with my hands to like demonstrate what i yeah it's it's late <laughs> but i actually really do like the way that this turned out and so i hope that you're enjoying it as well and i hope that this will inspire you to try some ombre so here is my ombre it's still a little bit damp 
but I think it's really sweet and I didn't have to pay $299 for it. <laughs> so. And some of my sweet subscribers have told me that I must sign my paintings. So I'm just pulling out my Arteza um, acrylic paint marker and I just signed my artwork and that's it. It is all done. Let me know what you think. Now it's time for a shout out timeout. Very nice, Valerie. All these wonderful 4th of July projects, just fantastic. A marvelous Mary. Mary's been busy, and look at how beautiful these are. So nice. An awesome Judy. Judy created this for her great-grandson. He wants to play with his puppets. Awesome. I would love to give you a shout-out as well. If you have interest, please send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. So this is my inspiration. It was on sale for $122, normally $149. I have this old lamp. This is also like a thrift flip, you guys, because um, this so I, this lamp was in my house growing up as like a, a toddler, an infant. I think my parents probably had it even before I was even born. And my brother recently gave it to me. He'd had it in storage in his basement, I think, but I got it all cleaned up. And now I'm showing you that I'm using a hula skirt from the, I guess this is like a hula skirt, grass skirt, whatever you want to call it, from the Dollar Tree. I'm sectioning off nine of these strands and I'm going to leave it on that rope for right now just because it will help to hold it while I am braiding it. So I'm going to leave it on there and I'm going to braid it all the way down the length of the grass strands. So I've got three strands in each section and it's actually more like six because these are doubled over also. So once I get down to the bottom, I am going to go ahead and twist that up a little bit, use some hot glue. I'm going to bend it over on itself. Please be careful when you're doing this that you don't burn yourself. I did get out my finger protectors. Thank you, Sarah, <laughs> in just a minute, just to make sure that, um, that I wasn't burning myself because hot glue can be rough, you guys. So just make sure that you're careful there. So I folded that up, made sure it was secure, and then I took my little end off of the twine. I cut that down and I'm sealing up, sorry, I'm a little out of frame, sealing up the other end with some hot glue and I'm going to bend that over as well and just make sure that my ends are nice and clean and finished. So then I am going to start wrapping it around the base of my lamp. And I did this one strand at a time because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. And so I just kind of continued to create the braids as I went. So of course the skirt is kind of like attacking me there. <laughs> I finally will move it out of the way in a second, but um, just using a little bit of hot glue where necessary and working my way up the lamp. So here I'm coming in with another braided strand. I'm not gonna put you through all of the braiding and all of the wrapping. You can see what I'm doing here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And so I took it all the way up to the top. I did leave this shade as is. The shade has definitely seen better days, but I think it serves its purpose for this particular DIY. I do plan on redoing the shade on a future video, so you'll want to come back and visit with me again soon so that you can see what I do to the shade. And that'll be a separate, um, separate video. But I decided, and I know this isn't like the inspiration picture but i decided i wanted to add something that was going to make it a little bit more nautical so i have these awesome starfish and i just added one to either side i felt like it also helped to take up space on that base i love this and i hope you love it too and here we are with the final reveal
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the project, I hope that you'll give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know which one was your favorite. And please, if you have not already subscribed, consider doing so. I really appreciate your support. Be sure to go and check out Antoinette's video. Her link is in my description box. I know that you are going to love her projects as well. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.